Hello everyone and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel, Gospel on the Go with Rachel for Sunday the 4th of February. Today we are celebrating the 5th Sunday after Epiphany. We will begin with our, the gathering of the community with our land acknowledgement. As we gather this day, we commit ourselves to seeking new ways of being in relationship and new ways of acknowledging and living out our relationships with our Indigenous siblings. We know that we hold an important responsibility to acknowledge the grounds on which we are privileged to gather as we worship the Creator. In humility and gentleness, we acknowledge that we live on Treaty 6 territory, this land that was first shared by Creator with the Cree, Nakota Sioux, Blackfoot, Dene, Sarsi, Salto, and Métis Nations. In light of our history and understanding of our role as Treaty 6 people, we dedicate ourselves to moving forward in the spirit of partnership, collaboration, and reconciliation as we learn together and contemplate the possibilities that lay ahead. Our service today is taken from the Anglican Church of Canada Book of, Commons, uh, Book of Alternative Services. And the service, if you have a copy or if you've downloaded a copy from the Anglican Church of Canada website, we begin on page 47. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. O come, let us worship. And we'll share together in the Vanity, which can be found on page 49. And the Vanity is a portion of Psalm 95, verses 1 to 7. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our first lesson today is taken from the 40th chapter of the prophet Isaiah, from verses 21 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out like hev the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely are their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint nor grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 147, verses 1 to 11 and verse 20c. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. 
He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God with a lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the, the second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 to 23. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe beside, betide me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do that this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make, make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more, with, with, more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I might, by any means, save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson is taken from the first chapter of Mark, verses 29 to 39. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go up to, on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. After Jesus healed Simon Peter's mother, she got up and served all the people she found in her home. She certainly didn't get much of a chance to recuperate, did she? Jesus didn't get a break either, as we are told that the whole city was gathered around the door and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. Jesus had a rough night. Just imagine what he might have been anticipating. He's been walking the city streets, talking to people, encouraging them to repent, and finally he looks forward to a home-cooked meal, some rest, 
off his tired and weary feet, only to find that in order to get that meal, he has to heal the cook first. And then the crowds show up, and there's no end to the need and busyness of his evening. So much for a quiet night at a friend's house. And then we're told that in the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Jesus needed a break. He needed some time to slow down by himself to pray and be by himself to pray and to be present with his heavenly father. Doesn't that sound idyllic? And then we are told that Simon and his companions hunted for him. It says they hunted for him. They didn't just wake up in the morning and wonder where Jesus had disappeared to. They didn't wander the house checking for him. Nope, they hunted for him. Like he was some kind of prey. They hunt for him. There is a strong sense here that they felt the urgent need to be with him. Their need to be with him surpassed his need to be alone with God for a little while. Can you imagine what this scene must have felt like? I have a hunch that there are a few of you ladies out there who know what life this, what this might be like. Anyone glad that bathroom doors have locks on them when you have young children? Any of you gentlemen ever escape to the garage to putter in solitude for just a little while, just to see your little one jumping up at the window trying to get your attention? All too often, it seems that when we grow up and become responsible, that responsibility also brings with it no chance to ever be, a, be able to be alone, to recoup, to refresh and reset. Sometimes life feels like that Sandra Bullock and Keanu Reeves movie, Speed, about a bus that will, will blow up if it slows down below a certain speed. We just have to keep moving and moving and moving because, like sharks, if we stop, we will die. It's a myth, folks. Maybe not about the sharks, but it is about us. If we stop, we will not die. Honest. But somehow, sometimes, we feed ourselves the lie that we are so important in our own world that if we stop and slow down, everything will come to a screeching halt. And that is a lie the devil tells us. Nowhere in scripture are we given anything to suggest that we are never to slow down, never to rest or refresh. As a matter of fact, there are a couple of times in the Gospels themselves when Jesus does indeed seek out time to be alone, to rest, to take time for refilling his tank when everyone else has drained it dry. We can't have a good relationship with God or with Jesus if we never slow down long enough to just be present in their presence. What good is praying if our praying only sounds like our voice is going on and on and on without stopping and listening to what God might be saying? Or even just stopping and listening in the silence of something God is not saying. There are indeed times when family, friends, work, even play feels like we are being hunted. But we have to take a step, a step back and realize that when we allow that feeling to happen, we are the ones allowing the hunting to happen. We are the ones who have made the decision not to be hunted, even if it means intentionally slowing down, saying no to others, and more likely saying no to ourselves. In a week and a half, we will be staring Ash Wednesday and the season of Lent right in the face. And we may be feeling, after the busyness of Christmas, that we haven't had a chance to slow down yet. Before we head into the season of Lent, we all need to make a plan as to how we will take time to retreat into God's presence this Lenten season and allow God to come to us. Allow God to come to us, especially if we are in a place in our lives where we find we're having trouble getting to God. Maybe it will mean getting up half an hour early or staying up a little later at night. Maybe you might start a prayer journal that you can dedicate 10 minutes to every day or light a candle while on the phone with a prayer partner daily. You need your retreat time. God needs you to have that retreat time too. 
for the sake of your soul, I am begging you to pull a Jesus moment. Steal away in silence to be alone. Fall asleep in the boat while others are scurrying around you. Go into that garden of Gethsemane to pray and let it all out. This coming Lent is a season in which you are invited to slow down. It is a time we make, it is time we make time to lay ourselves down before God and simply ask that God would help us rest. And we may find that in that rest, we will find the energy we need to get back up and face the months to come that will be filled with new roles and responsibilities in our parish and in our time of transition. To look ahead and see all the people and things that are no longer trying to hunt us, but which we are waiting for, which are waiting for us in glory and peace and hope. Take time to rest, to relax, to refresh, to pray, to just simply be in God's presence. And you may find that you have the energy and the wherewithal to go back into your life, to celebrate the gift you have of family and friends, of work and play, but remember, even Jesus needed time to step aside, to sit down, and to rest. Amen. For affirmation of faith today, we will be using the, the Apostles' Creed, which in the Book of Alternative Services can be found on page 52. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now take some time for prayer. And I invite you to hit pause to take some time to, to, to offer your prayers for yourself, for your loved ones, for people who have asked you for prayer, people that God has placed on your heart to pray for. And then when you're ready, come back, and if you have a book, turn to page 120, because we will use the, the, the Incarnation Litany number 13. As a people of hope and anticipation, we pray for those who have asked for prayer, those whose leadership we rely upon, those who carry the gospel to the peoples around them. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Anglican Church of South America. In our national cycle of prayer, we pray for the Right Reverend John Watton, Bishop, and the people and clergy of the Diocese of Central Newfoundland. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the Dean, Council, and Congregations of the Two Rivers, Nith Valley, and Niagara areas of the Eastern Synod. Together, we pray for a growing openness to dialogue and encounter with people of other faith traditions during World Interfaith Harmony Week. In the Council of the North, we pray for the indigenous, indigenous ministries of the Diocese of the Yukon. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Caledonia, the Right Reverend David Lehman Bishop. In Indigenous Ministry, we pray for, in the Diocese, we pray for in the Indigenous Ministries of Travis Enright, Archdeacon for Reconciliation and Decolonization, Fiona Brownlee, Aboriginal and Rural Liaison, and Fred Matthews, Lay Reader in Charge of Church of the Nativity, Frog Lake. In our partner parish, or partner Diocese of Bouye, we pray for the Parish of Mubanga, Jean Bosco Nien Kimbona, Rector, and we pray for the people of Kihuan Cree Nation. We remember our parish partner of Bagambo in, Di in Bouye Diocese. In our, day, day, in our day spring parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Colin Beecroft, Dennis and Deanna Lafreniere, Greg and Kristen Ward. 
We pray for our siblings in day spring at St. Mary's Edgerton, St. Saviour's Vermilion, and St. Thomas Wainwright. We take time to pray aloud or in the silence of our hearts for all whom we now name, remembering especially Kathy and Drew, Dan, Don, Janiah, Jimmy, Leon, Rob, Stephen, Trevor, Tricia, and Dolores. We pray for all members of the Canadian Armed Forces, remembering especially the, Chris, the, the chaplains at Garrison Wainwright, Rob, Eduardo, Balinwu, and Kent. In joy and humility, let us pray to the creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation, brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the word made flesh, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the submission of the maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the river Jordan, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. We pray now for Dayspring Ministries. Creator God, you have commissioned us to be bearers of light to your world. As you have given to us the Dayspring who is Jesus Christ our Lord, so encourage us to share him with all whom we meet. Allow us the privilege and the responsibility to carry the light of your Dayspring into the communities in which we live, work, and play, the communities you call us to serve. With your Holy Spirit's presence and guidance, may our work as Dayspring Ministries bring hope, peace, and joy to your world. In the name of the Dayspring, who is Jesus our Lord, we pray. Amen. And as Dayspring Ministries heads into a time of transition and seeking new leadership, we pray this prayer. God of all hope and peace, we thank you that you are leading us forward into a time, new time of ministry. Give us wisdom and discernment that we might hear your voice. Bless the people you are leading to us who will offer us their gifts and companionship as we move into a time of transition and into our future ministry. May we prepare ourselves for them as you prepare them for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And the collect for the day, or the prayer that collects our thoughts for the day, can be found on page 353. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now today we're going to use a different Lord's Prayer. It's the more contemporary version. It's not used often in my church. Um, but today we will use it. And I invite you, if you have a book, to turn to page 54. And it is the first of the two Lord's Prayers printed. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And before I pronounce the dismissal, um, some quick announcements. I am taking my own sermon, sermon advice and I will be on retreat. Um, leaving later on today, heading for Toronto, um, to the convent of the Sisters of St. John the Divine. Um, and we'll stay there. I'll be back on Friday evening. I'll be back in Wainwright. 
So I will be away all week. There will be videos um, released Monday through Friday. Uh, so I invite you, I just won't be putting them on Facebook or emailing them out. So if you haven't already, um, if you'd like to follow the Church at Home videos, please go to Church at Home. Um, on the bottom right-hand corner, there should be a picture. Um, I think it's of my dog, Dude. Just click on that little circle and um, you can subscribe. And if you hit the bell, then they will send you notifications when, when a new video is released. But they're released every morning at 5 o'clock um, Edmonton time which is seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So please join me for that. Um, if you are in the parish watching, just a reminder that next Sunday, the 11th, we will have Eucharist at St. Thomas Wainwright at 9.30, uh, and then we'll come back together at 4 p.m. in the church hall for our annual meeting. At St. Mary's in Edgerton, we will have, yes, we will have Eucharist at 11.30, followed by a potluck lunch, and then our annual meeting immediately follow, following. And St. Saviors in Vermilion will have morning prayer next Sunday, the 11th at 10:30, with their Eucharist or with their uh, annual meeting have, happening after church and potluck lunch on Sunday, February 18th. My last Sunday in the parish will be February the 25th, and everyone is invited to join us in Wainwright at St. Thomas at 10:30 a.m. for a Eucharist and a potluck lunch, and my final um, a chance to say goodbye because I'll move that week. Um, Church at Home and Gospel on the Go will continue. Uh, there might be a hiccup or two between the 26th of February and about the 8th of March. I'm hoping there won't be. Um, they probably won't be released on Facebook regularly or email um, simply because I may not have access to my computer, um, but I'm gonna do my best to get them recorded and have everything up, including the Sundays. I should be, I will be in with Brandon to start work as Bishop-elect on Friday, the Mar March 1st, and in the cathedral, so for, in the cathedral, where I think I'll be preaching on the March the 3rd. I think that is everything. I'm reminded about the annual meeting. If you have a pastoral emergency this week, please call my cell phone number. Um, it's printed on the bulletins. If you receive them in church, you can check it out. Um, if you call the house number, you can get the, the number there, I believe, as well. Um, and I will pick, pick up messages once per day. Um, and if it's a pastoral emergency, I know that's slow, um, but out here in the rural world, we have limited number of priests who are able to, um, to assist with pastoral emergencies. Rob will take care of things that need to happen immediately, um, but, but I will be back Friday night and can handle um, other things following that, and soon we will hopefully have an announcement of who the interim priest will be for Day Spring Ministries, so that when I leave, you will indeed have a name and a phone number to call. Thank you all for joining me, and I will dismiss you with this, these words. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, working in us what pleases him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Hope to see you tomorrow at Church at Home with Rachel or next Sunday on Gospel on the Go. Have a beautiful Sunday, and enjoy wherever you are and make sure you get some peace.